Oh, man. Hey, guys, it's Mike from Sunny Slope Homestead. Hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you can see all the cool stuff that we're up to. But moving on from that, guys, the trash is piling up. And that burn barrel, it doesn't have another, it doesn't have another, uh, another day of burning trash left in it. So today, we're making a new burn barrel. I picked up a few things from the hardware store to get us moving. I got a new idea. Got a little theory I'm gonna test out. I'm gonna raise my new burn barrel off the ground with cinder blocks. I did that with my last one, but the kicker is what I'm gonna do underneath that burn barrel to take care of all the ashes and stuff. That's gonna be the new uh, experimental thing that we're trying out today. So stick with me and let's make a burn barrel. That's what's left of my burn barrel. There is pretty much, pretty much nothing left. She's seen better days, guys, and she is done. She does not have one more fire left in her. We are gonna put her out of her misery today. I know, guys, it's sad, it's sad, I know, but it, it had to be done. It had to be done, guys, because there's nothing left of this barrel. I had to put the old girl out of her misery. She didn't suffer, I'm telling you, she didn't suffer. She is, but you can see, there's nothing left of this burn barrel. So what we're looking to do is I'm gonna build a burn barrel that doesn't collect ash. This ash, will sit in the bottom. If you don't empty it out right away, it gets wet and then it just starts rotting away your, your drum. You know, and it's hot, cold, hot, cold. Worst scenario for metal. So we're gonna get this off the ground and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get ash to fall through the bottom of this so we can make our burn barrel last longer, guys. Let's get to it. All right, we got ourselves we got ourselves a 55 gallon drum, guys. You can get these virtually anywhere and more than likely you can get them for free. Everybody wants to get rid of these things because in my line of work, uh, we either gotta pay to have them recycled or we gotta pay a guy an hourly wage to cut the tops out of them by law and crush them. And then they should be rinsed out too. So, hey, if they can just give them away, the better. So with this drum here, you're gonna watch out for things that carry or hold nasty things that you don't want to be a part of. Uh, oil drums are gonna be your best thing to get uh, because they tend to be not rusted out on the inside, even though they might look really bad on the outside, the inside's usually pretty good. This one's a Vister, uh, Vister, Vilter compressor oil. They use this in refrigeration compressors. Uh, it's just a basic mineral type of oil. So she's good to go. So what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna pop the tops off these and I'm gonna take a sawzall and we're gonna cut the top out and then we're gonna cut the bottom out and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do on this bottom half of this drum to make the ashes fall through. And then once all said and done, if we got enough light, we're gonna put some ventilation holes in the only way I know how, guys. So first things first, I'm gonna open this barrel up uh, and make sure that there's nothing inside this barrel that's gonna be flammable, uh, that has a flash or a vapor flash, so when I'm cutting or make a spark, this thing doesn't go poof in my face. You never know if it was Billy Joe's first day on the job and he put some funky stuff in here, so. All right, take little channel locks like this, get these, uh, these bungs off, so you can open up the bung hole. That's what it's called, guys. It's called a bung hole. So, all right. Uh, you know what? People give me a hard time for buying cheap tools like this. This isn't super cheap, but it's not DeWalt. Milwaukee or anything, but guys around the house if you're just doing projects and you're not an industrial contractor of any sort Dude, you could totally get by with these don't be don't be caught up with the name brands of always getting DeWalt and stuff So both sides of the barrel are cut out now. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to use to put on the other side of this barrel to keep from ashes collecting and holding that moisture and rotting my drum out. And here it is. 
It's just a cheap grill grate. So what my plan is, is I'm gonna weld this right there. And theory, when I flip this over, the ashes will just fall through when I'm burning on top of cinder block. So that's the theory. So let's try this out. Let's get this thing welded on here. We'll get some ventilation holes in it. And hopefully we're burning trash before we lose the daylight. So I gotta hurry up on this and stop running my, my mouth and get going. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna get some of this metal off, this rust. Make sure I kind of get a good surface to weld to. Now I'm putting some good heavy tacks on this because mind you, this thing's it's gonna be expanding and contracting, it's gonna be getting hot. If I put little chintzy little tack welds on there, they're gonna pop loose in no time. So try to put some good ones on there. But in the end, this is a burn barrel. Okay, so we got her welded in. I think she's pretty solid. So it's all that's left is getting some ventilation holes put in this thing. I think we still got some daylight to get that done. So let's get to it. Yummy. All right, so my theory behind this is the ash will fall through the can, onto the ground, underneath the brick, collect on the bottom so I can scoop it out and throw in the ditch when it's all extinguished. Um, this is going to keep the ash out the bottom of the can and rust in the bottom of the drum out, should I say. And it's also going to give me a lot of ventilation so I can burn trash efficiently and not have it smoldering when you have people over or and you have to smell that for a long period of time. So we're gonna get some uh, we're gonna get some ventilation holes put in this thing. We're gonna wind up using my freedom twig. I'm not gonna bring out the freedom uh, stick. I'm gonna use the freedom twig, and we're gonna put some holes in this the best way I know how. So let's get started. Now I'm gonna have to go through about four more, five more of these uh, twig magazines to put the ventilation holes, those perfect nine millimeter ventilation holes in there. So I'll get through all that. I had to try it once. I mean, I don't know what the big deal is. Why do people like shooting like this? I have no idea. I could have hit squat. I mean, I'm just shooting a drum, but I'm not shooting it at the place that I wanted to shoot it. Guys, I want to remind you I'm a trained professional when it comes to handling firearms. I spent six years in the Marine Corps, and I served as a sniper in the Space Force. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But I was in the Marine Corps, so I do know how to handle a weapon or two. We're almost there. Oh, yeah, now I can hear. I said, we're done putting ventilation holes in that drum now. So we're gonna get those that thing on the blocks. We're gonna load it up with a little bit of a trash, fire up and see how she works. I usually use diesel fuel to get these fires going, but I'm thinking uh, with that ventilation in there, it's not gonna be an issue. Well, She's working. You believe that? Fire, it's burning. You started something on fire and it catches on fire, it's amazing. I think the ventilation is working really well. 
Oh man. Look at the air move through that thing. Now total investment in this project, 20 bucks. I think it cost me $20, a little bit of time and a free, free uh, barrel. Now I told you, you can get these barrels anytime, anywhere, practically free. You just gotta stop over and ask somebody if you can have a barrel. Now the first time you're using these barrels, you're probably not gonna wanna stand too close to them because all that paint and stuff's burning off. Not that you wanna stand close to trash barrels, but you probably wanna get it going and just let it sit a little bit, stay away from it. That thing's really working. That air is just blowing, man. Now you can see in the back, I've got some garbage that is just your regular household garbage that we need to get burnt up. Now, that's gonna be the true test to see how that burns. You know, plastics and stuff like that, they're inside there. Are they gonna clog the grate up? Are they gonna combust completely and turn to ash? I don't know. We're gonna find out and see how this thing really burns. Legit garbage. So I'm gonna start this fire up again with the paper materials that we have. And then once we get it nice and hot, then I'm gonna start throwing the bags on. I almost ate it right there. Jeez Louise, I can't wait for springtime, seriously. All right. So we're just gonna light her up just like that, throw her in, start adding stuff to it. Guys, I'm gonna link my other video on burn barrels up top. It's a quick five minute video showing you basically the dangers of burning trash. Uh, I'm, in that video, I share a story of somebody that I know personally who was in uh, pretty much intensive care for having a trash fire burn up on them and explode because uh, using wrong kind of flammable materials in the wrong time of year. So check that video out. It's gonna be linked up top. All right, I think she's ready to start handling some bag trash. Try not to slip on this sheet of ice. Man, I can't stress the importance of watching out for flame and wind direction when you're putting trash in there. Because guy with me, with this majestic beard of mine, it could be gone in a second and you'll see me just slapping myself to death trying to get my beard out. And uh, obviously the facial burns that you can get from this too. So be sure you're wearing long sleeves, gloves, stuff, cotton material. No, try not to wear anything polyester in case you do catch on fire. Because like I said, my friend that uh, that happened to, he was wearing a polyester shirt. And when that stuff burns onto you, if worst case scenario, you do catch on fire, you gotta drop, you know, stop, drop and roll. Man, you don't want plastic stuck to your skin. And that's what polyester clothing is, is basically plastic woven strings and it melts to you and you can't get it off and it just burns and burns and burns and burns now what's happened in the past is i've loaded that drum up and it smothers itself out because it can't get any oxygen underneath so i have to sit there and tend to it and stir it like a big pot of stew uh for anybody who was in service overseas stirring those half cut drums of uh of crap from the porta johns burning with diesel fuel yeah it brought those days back. You sit there, stir that stuff up, trying to get that fire to keep it burning. Um, I'm gonna try to overload this and see how well it keeps up. So let's overload it and see what happens. Oh man, oh, did you guys see that? 
Did you guys see how fast that fire changed direction and flared up on me? I was paying attention, thank God, but uh, I was able to get out of that flame in time. So she's overloaded really bad. In a normal burn barrel, that thing would have been, that thing will be extinguished and uh, it wouldn't be able to uh, keep up. It would just smolder out and it'd create a bunch of smoke like it's doing right now. Let's see how it does. I'm gonna get the rest of the stuff in there though. Boy, do I have a mess to clean up. I'm gonna have to rake all this stuff up this spring. And my plan is, is I'm gonna put a bunch of limestone rock down here. Um, the problem during the winter time when I'm burning down here is that ground starts to thaw out. As you can see, this is all ice around here, but this is all thawed out because the fire thaws the ground out. Turns into a big muddy mess. And it's just a, it's just not a pleasant experience to come down here and swash around in mud and then slip and fall and do all this stuff. So I'm gonna put rock down here this spring. Well, she seems to be, seems to be keeping up. It's burning it down. That airflow is really working. Yeah, I gotta pick all that up. That's when that bag busted open, but. Yep, like I said, I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. I'll get all this stuff cleaned up. Get rock over this so it's not such a mess. And this is the reason why I really wanna do this, because I wanna control that ash, and I wanna, I wanna be able to pick it up and scoop it up and dispose of it instead of having a big pile of ash here. Alright guys, I'm running out of daylight and this fire is not showing any signs of slowing down to give you an idea what kind of ash is going to be left over. But it is definitely getting plenty of airflow as you can tell and it is con totally combusting everything inside that drum right now. So we're going to just have to pick up where we left off tomorrow starting right now. It's the next day. And I'm interested to see, oops, I hit the, hit the plow. Drive, pay attention, not to the camera. All right, free and clear. Woo. She's sluggish. Ah. All right guys, so if it's a little windy, I apologize, but we're gonna check on how well this fire barrel did. Because I'm thinking it did a great job. But let's find out. There she is. Untouched from last night. Not a lot of ash. What's it look like on the inside? Oh. Well, let's see how much is solid. Solid. Oh, tripping over stuff. No. Nope. Not much solid. Pretty much did what I wanted it to do. I think this did a wonderful job. Good ventilation. No ashes were left in there, <clears throat> except for the ones that didn't fall through, but that's just because they didn't have enough weight or gravity to pull themselves through, but they obviously shook through there. And in a good windy day, and if it was the rain, I think that barrel would get wet those ashes would fall down through the bottom Woo! it is extremely cold and windy out guys man i am stoked that it did such a good job well i'm going to call that the end to this episode and if you like what you saw and you want to see some future content be sure to like and subscribe and uh i'll see you on the next episode of sunny slope homestead all right see you later guys